Yes, I know. We've done this before. Stewed pork. However, we've never done it specifically with pork belly. So with the whole pork belly thing and the whole stewing thing, I thought we were going to give it a new name. What's up, soldiers? Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Always vibes it up in the kitchen. A pleasure to have you guys here with me. Today, we're doing a Caribbean-style braised pork belly. Stay tuned. You're going to love this one. Yeah, I know. It's too pork, but oh gosh, let me mama guy all a little bit now. Let's talk about the pork belly. First of all, I'm using pork belly, which I picked up at, at the Costco. So it does have the sort of fat cap, but it doesn't have the skin. The skin was removed. And um, all I'm doing now is cutting up into strips, which I'm going to further cut up into one inch cubes. And without that skin, all that fat is going to render out and we're going to get nice juicy pieces of that pork. I remember the whole idea here is to really have that nice Caribbean flavor with all the herbs and everything else along with that heightened flavor of ginger as we braise it. So all I'm doing, as I said, is cutting this up. I'll show you how easy this is. You need a nice sharp knife. Just about three quarter of an inch thick. Now, if you wanted to use pork belly with the skin, you can certainly do that. I know that would be the preferred method for my mom if she were doing it. But here we go. If you wanted to trim off some of the fat, you can certainly do that. But small thing, man, this is a once in every five, six months kind of recipe. So the pieces of pork, it's all cut up now. Yes, it is looking fatty, but as I said, it is once in every six months we're going to do this. And I'll show you, a, I'll tell you a tip at the end how you can get rid of some of that fat. I washed it with half of a lime and some cool water. It's drained. First things first, we got to season. So in goes that salt. It may look like a lot of salt, but there's a lot of meat in there. There's about five pounds of pork belly in there. Some Worcestershire. Oh, shame. Uncle Chris, you run out of Worcestershire, boy. <laughs> yeah, dry over season. Some tomato ketchup. Some light soy sauce. I hope all are paying attention. Eh? So there's a little bit of sodium element in there as well, too. But we're going to get a little umami from that. Oh, gosh, look how we're using big words, umami, and all kind of thing like that. And then a little bit of Angostura bitters. If you know, you know. If you don't know, ask. We need some Caribbean green seasoning. This is my homemade Caribbean green seasoning. If you don't know, ask. I will point you in the right direction where you can find that recipe. And we nice. We want a nice big heaping. Well, almost two tablespoons of that. We're going big on bowl today. Going in with some fresh ground black pepper now. A nice dose of that. I have here the bottom half of a scotch bonnet pepper and that's going to give it a nice kick and the top part here where all that seeds and white membrane is that is where we've talked about this before but a little reminder that is where most of the heat is so you notice none of that is in there wash your hands with soap and water immediately after and I've got here a ton of ginger thickly sliced so you can take it out later if you want to you can grate it in there that's fine as well and all we'll do now is give that a good mix. Now, Caribbean green seasoning. Whew. Seasoning peppers, garlic, um, scallions, parsley, shadow benny, cilantro, all kind of niceness in there. Thyme. So everything is in there. It's all homemade. It's all done in an olive oil. So no preservatives, nothing you cannot pronounce and stuff like that. So I highly encourage you to make your own. Give that a good mix, and I don't know if I mentioned it or not, that soy sauce that I use there, that's a light soy sauce. All the ingredients I use will be listed down in the description of the video, and the printable recipe will be available on CaribbeanPot.com shortly. Two hours in the fridge, allow it to marinate, and then we'll get cracking on the stovetop. In my nice big heavy Dutch oven pot here, I've got one tablespoon of olive oil in there, and I'm gonna go in with a tablespoon and a half, two tablespoons of golden brown sugar. Now, if you've seen me do the sort of brown stew before, this is how we're gonna develop that color and that lovely stew flavor that is so famous throughout the Caribbean. I assure you, if you've never had it, and you're probably questioning, Chris, why is there sugar in there? It will not be sweet. 
It'll be, oh man, you don't know what you're missing out on. You gotta make this, I'm telling you. And it will go um, frothy, after frothy, as you're seeing here, it's gonna go dark in color, a sort of an amber color. And that is an indication that it's time to add the seasoned pork, marinade and everything into the pot. Make sure your stove is on nice and a high heat. And add about a third of it. And then move it around. Now we're gonna go ahead and add the rest of it. Just to coat all the pieces of meat with that caramelized sugar. The bowl that we have to marinate left back, hold on to that. Put about three and a half cups of water to four cups of water in there. And set that aside, but for now, we just wanna we glaze the bottom of the pot with the pieces of pork now. So keep stirring that. In a couple minutes on that high heat, it's gonna come up to a boil and start re releasing its own juices. So here's where you're gonna turn your heat down to medium low. Put the lid on there and let that go for about 10, 15 minutes. It's been about 17 minutes on that low boil and you can notice all that liquid I kid you not I didn't add any of that in there so what we need to do now to sort of infuse the flavor of that stew and the herbs and everything else the brown stewing method there we're gonna crank up that heat lid off and we're gonna burn off all that liquid and it's gonna help develop that nice sort of stew flavor that sort of braised pork belly flavor that we're looking for it's really going to heighten everything just about five minutes on that high heat and all the liquid has burnt up what you're left with is a ton of that fat that has rendered down so what i'm doing is pushing it to the side and i'm going to come now and take some of that out put it into a bowl and once it hardens you're trying to get only oil you're not trying to get all the niceness on the bottom and you can see how much oil I'm already pulling out there. Once it hardens, at that point, you can scrape it into your garbage or however you dispose of your fat. I will not recommend putting this down your sink. And I know my hand is in the way there because the last thing you want to do is to have a bill to call in a plumber to clean those pipes. But notice how much of that fat. I'm gonna go and take some more out, but what we need to do is have that water ready that we spoke about earlier. So if you just give me a second, I'm just going to take out some more of that fat and then we're going to get to cooking some more. And now in goes that braising liquid. My heat is still on high as I want to bring that back up to a boil. I'm just going to give this a stir. I'm going to add some more flavor to things because we took out some flavor by removing the sort of solids from the bottom there. And that's a clove of garlic. There's another one here. There's three cloves of garlic in total that I just smashed and put in there. So we got that onion. We got some tomatoes. And I've got some thyme. I'm going to bring this up to a boil, then we're going to cover it and let it go on a sort of a, ro a gentle rolling boil until it's nice and tender. It's already starting to come up to a boil, so I'm just going to give that a stir. Make sure everything is moved around in there nicely. I'm going to turn my heat down as soon as it starts going to the bubble. As I said, I'm going to turn it down to a sort of a rolling, a gentle rolling boil. And we're going to put the lid on but we're gonna leave it slightly ajar, maybe half a centimeter, just so some of that steam could escape. It's been about an hour and 10 minutes. I've been stirring it every 10 to 15 minutes or so, and I know it's fully tender now. Now, depending on how old the pig was, where the butcher got it from, where you bought it, 
Um, it may take longer, but in my case here, it's falling off the bone tender. Um, you want to do three things. One, you can fish out the stems from the, uh, the thyme. Two, if you wanted, you can remove the pieces of ginger. And three, taste it for salt and adjust it accordingly. Let's go in tight so you can see what's happening there. The final thing I like doing to help cut some of that fat because there's still quite a bit of fat in there. And speaking about fat, that is how much fat I removed earlier. So I'm still waiting for that to solidify a bit and then I'm just going to go into the garbage. I like going in with some parsley. That parsley helps to sort of cut the fat a little bit. Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com, braised pork belly, Caribbean style, it's got a lovely gravy there. If you want to cook this down dry, you can certainly cook that down dry, but well, man, I'm telling you, you see that gravy there? That is just proper. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me, with Mama Guy all there, a little bit there, calling it braised pork belly. It's really stew pork. All right, take it easy. What's up, soldiers? Don't forget to click subscribe. If you've already clicked subscribe, hit that bell notification thing. I want to all you missing out on the new videos, man. Come on, click.